Good morning, everyone, and welcome to opening day, spring 2021. I want to start from a position of gratitude. This has been an extraordinary 10 months, and I appreciate so much the way that you have shown up for students each and every day. I'd like to welcome this morning um, all of our employees. I have to tell you, though, I miss you. It's such a beautiful day here this morning on the San Luis Obispo campus. And my favorite part of opening day is the opportunity to greet everyone in the lunch line. And I am really grieving that we don't have that opportunity today. But I look forward to it um, becoming part of our tradition once again. Welcome this morning to Trustee Dana Stroud, who has joined us, and to Superintendent President Emeritus Dr. Gilstorp. We're so glad that you're able to join us here today. We do have a brief agenda for this morning. We're going to celebrate our new employees, recognize excellence with two awards. I'm going to provide a college update, very brief presentation previews of the other um, recorded content that is part of our opening day, and then we are going to end our morning with good news. So right now, we have a new employee's presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Guadalupe Lizette Alvarado. I am the new Bilingual Enrollment Success Specialist here at Cuesta College. Hi, my name is Diane Caro and I am joining the custodial team. Alexis Delavet, Alternate Media Facilitator. Hi, I'm Rich Locke and I'm the Automotive Service Tech for the Cuesta Fleet. Hi, my name is Amanda Scudder. I will be your new custodian. Hi, my name is Lex Otello. I'm a Cuesta College Custodian 1. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Amoroso and I'm a part-time instructor in the Criminal Justice Division. My name is Darby Axelrod and I will be instructing within the Certified Nurse and Assistant Program. Hi, my name is Carl Gallen and I will be a part-time instructor in the Business Department. Hi, I'm Ashley Hart and I'm hired as a mental health therapist. Hello everyone, I'm Jeffrey Land. I'll be teaching political science at the California Men's Colony. Hi, my name is Mercedes Rutherford Pine, and I'm a reference librarian. Welcome. We are so glad to have you on board and recognize that you have joined us during this challenging time. We appreciate you being part of our team. We're going to begin our special recognition today with the Elaine Holly Coates Service Excellence Award. The Elaine Holly Coates Service Excellent Award was established as an endowment fund by the Foundation Board of Directors and named in honor of Elaine Holly Coates, the first classified employee of Cuesta College, one who represented the epitome of service excellence. I'm going to share the nomination comments. This individual leads by example always working alongside students and empowering them to use their voice and take action. A great collaborator who works well with faculty, staff, and students, providing leadership, commitment, and passion. One who always arrives first and leaves last, doing what it takes to create the best experiences and services for students. Always ready to support different offices and initiatives that improve the way we support students and their success at Cuesta College. An advocate for addressing equity in mental health amongst Cuesta College students. Good at creating opportunities for conversations about race, equity, and inclusion. Played a role in the 21-day equity challenge, Black Lives Matter movement efforts, undocumented and unafraid panels, securing speakers and conducting student campus climate surveys. Their advocacy efforts are lowering barriers for all students, but especially our Latino, Latina, undocumented, and other marginalized students. 
They're motivating and inspiring. Take the time to listen to ideas and support you along the process. This is especially true for the guidance provided to the Latina Leadership Network. It is a pleasure to announce the winner of this year's Elaine Holly Coates Service Excellent Award is Quay Day. Quay, congratulations. I hope you can feel the appreciation and the applause. Um, we are going to provide you opportunity to share your thoughts with the campus community. Richie will be setting up a time for you to be able to film that. But our sincerest congratulations and thank you for your work very well done on behalf of students. I'm now going to invite our Academic Senate President, Dr. Roland Finger, to present the Peter and Emily Diffley Award for Faculty Excellence. Roland? Okay, I'm here. Thank you. Congrats, Quay. Okay, so for the next one up. This year's Peter Emma May Diffley Award winner for faculty excellence cultivates his classes like no other. If all great classes are well-tended gardens, this year's winner has a distinct advantage. We don't have any dirt on him. His students have ranged from the sprouting age of four to the ripe age of 74. He spends a lot of time in a glass house, but no one casts stones at him. He has a 14 karat reputation. He would never turn up his nose at a chance to help a student to reach the root of a problem. He is behind Cuesta's annual plant sale and was pivotal in bringing the Small Farmers Conference to Cuesta in February 2020. He is a man of the land, the home of the free and the brave. This year's winner is outstanding in his field of agricultural plant science, Dean Harrell. Congratulations, Dean. Congratulations. Hey, and thank you, Dr. Finger, for that amazing um, introduction of our award winner today. We will be extending to Dean the same opportunity um, to record his thoughts and share those with the campus community. So congratulations, Quay, and congratulations, Dean. We appreciate your excellence in service. A brief college update. We have a big transition ahead of us. Our very own Dr. Mark Sanchez has been selected to lead Southwestern College, and his last day with Cuesta will be February 1. It is going to be difficult to say goodbye to Mark, as I have so appreciated the opportunity to work alongside of him, as he has been instrumental in the real integration of student support services and instruction at Cuesta College. I appreciate that Mark keeps students at the fore of his decision-making and planning, and that he brings a gentle sense of humor to work with him every day. But we know, and Mark has said, he has affirmed that he will always be a cougar. And we are excited that you will be taking a little piece of Western College with you as you transition. Our transition is going to include an open recruitment for an interim assistant superintendent, vice president of student success and support programs. We're going to be following the same process that we used um, to, to bring on an interim and then a permanent vice president of instruction. Dr. Jason Curtis, our vice president of instruction, will chair the hiring committee. We have an anticipated start date of March 4th, 2021. That is a quick um, turnaround for our interim, but this is a critical piece of our leadership here at Cuesta College, and we want to make sure that we don't go too long without having someone in that role. In the fall of 2021, we will open a recruitment for the permanent position. In the brief interim between when Mark walks out the door and we have an interim vice president selected. Um, all of the direct reports in the student success and support program areas will be uh, reporting directly to me. And um, several members of the cabinet are going to be assisting with taking on very particular um, pieces of leadership 
that um, Dr. Sanchez has fulfilled for us. So we are working hard to make sure that nothing is dropped um, in this transition and we'll be communicating as, as we go through the process to make sure that everyone is informed. Um, Mark, we send our very best wishes for continued success with you. Know that you will be missed and you leave a very lasting impression on our campus. This spring, Cuesta College will be hosting a partnership resource team. This is the second time that Cuesta College has engaged in this opportunity to have colleagues and peers come in and help to do some creative solution seeking um, on behalf of the institution. This is part of the statewide institutional effectiveness and partnership initiative. We have identified three areas of focus that the team will be assisting us with. The first is equity of access, and this is really determining the best use of district-owned real property and potential property to support student access throughout our service area. So the idea is that we are exploring um, with experts the best possible South County locations where we might expand access to our potential students in that area and also doing some evaluation of properties that the district currently owns in terms of putting that to the best use for the district. The second area is advanced technology and this is really focused on human resources and fiscal services looking at business processes and seeking to minimize paperwork and afford greater focus on interaction rather than the transaction. And the third area is our integrated planning and governance, um, a review to assess the existing structure and practice and to strengthen alignment with the current college goals and priorities that have been set forth in our strategic planning documents. One of the um, the challenges that we have is the rapidly changing um, system priorities and some of the expectations there, not only with our student-centered funding formula, but um, in other areas as well. And having just completed a very successful accreditation cycle, it is an ideal time to take a look at our processes. We know that they work, but it's an ideal opportunity to ensure that that they are strengthened and aligned in a way that's going to serve us well moving forward. So visits one and two will be this spring and they will be virtual. Visit three is planned for fall of 2021 and we have every hope that that will actually be an opportunity for the partnership resource team to come to our campus and meet with us. Part of the PRT is an opportunity to have some additional dollars, up to 200,000, that would um, come to the college to help us carry out this work. Two of the items identified here as areas of focus, the equity of access and advanced technology, are areas where having some additional resources are going to be very important part of the equation. Our integrated planning and governance doesn't necessarily need um, dollars to, to go through the process, but instead what is going to be important to Cuesta is having the experience and, um, and third party look at our, by our colleagues and peers at our processes and helping us to ensure that they are well aligned with our priorities. So a quick preview of the pre-recorded sessions that will round out opening day. First, on COVID-19, the human resources presentation really focuses on AB 685, which is new legislation around communication about communicable disease in the workplace. And so that is certainly the highlight of the, um, the human resources presentation. Some additional information that's really important and marks change for us around COVID-19 is that beginning as early as next week, we are going to be providing on-site COVID-19 testing. This is part of the Valencia Branch Laboratory, the large lab um, serving the state of California. And it will be for our employees and students 
um, on a voluntary basis. Now, the only exception to that is our high-risk activity groups that are engaged in sentinel testing. Those groups began that sentinel testing in the fall and will continue and will have the benefit of being able to conduct that testing right here on campus. Um, everyone else just has the opportunity to be tested as they desire and feel um, would help to put, put individuals at ease. So the test is self-administered. It's a mid-turbinate swab of both sides of the nose. Um, results will be returned in approximately 24 to 48 hours. Right now they're coming in in under 24 hours um, at to other test sites. And there is no um, medical supervision required of this. So we are in the process of hiring temporary employees who are going to assist um, in the organization and administration of this on-campus testing. It will be both on the San Luis Obispo campus and the North County campus. And we have been granted capacity to test up to 500 individuals per week. So pretty significant for our campus community. More information is going to be shared once all of the details, dates, and times have been determined. But I hope that um, you see this as the positive step forward in terms of maintaining our campus health and safety. The real goal is to be able to identify asymptomatic positive cases of COVID-19. And so to um, increase the, the safety for everyone by being able to, to catch disease even when an individual um, feels well and is not symptomatic. Second, the vaccine. There is good news coming this direction. We are part of what the state has designated um, as education in the broad sense. We are in phase 1B tier one. This is the next phase to be part of the vaccination process in San Luis Obispo County. Um, they're currently in the midst of phase 1A, but are rapidly wrapping up at least the first doses in that phase, and we will be next. So every employee of Cuesta College, permanent, full-time, part-time, our temporary employees, our limited number of student employees, everyone is on the list to be eligible for vaccine in phase 1B tier one. So uh, more information as it comes to us, uh, what the process will be, if there's required um, pre-registration or scheduling, all of that information will be shared as soon as we have it. Right now, the county has been vaccinating at a rate of 650 per day, but they have um, scaled up and are prepared to vaccinate at a rate of 3,000 per day. We fall into the phase 1B tier 1 with Cal Poly, so our 860 identified employees will somehow be um, integrated with their 6,500 employees. and. Um, we anticipate it will be rolled out over the course of a few short days that all of those vaccines will take place. I have to um, reiterate this is not mandatory, this is optional, um, but want you to know that we do have opportunity coming and coming our direction pretty soon in terms of vaccination. Finally, I am pleased to share that our custodial team has recently completed some additional training and um, as we are stepping into the spring term, they're going to be using new techniques, new equipment, um, and portable equipment that will move into high access areas that will move air through filters at a rapid pace overnight. And so I appreciate that our facilities team has been working to even advance our approach um, of maintaining a healthy campus while things like testing and vaccine are also being rolled out. Budget. So Vice President Dan Troy, his presentation is going to get into the weeds and all of the numbers around the budget, including the second federal stimulus, the governor's budget proposal, the chancellor's office priorities, 
and certainly projections for Cuesta College. I'm going to share today some of the things that I am seeing and hearing both from the Community College League and from the Chancellor's Office, in particular around advocacy. You may have heard about the K-shaped recovery. There has been quite a bit of, of talk about that and maybe not as much understanding of what that means. To help illustrate understanding, um, the League has released this particular graphic of the K-shaped recovery, which really shows how professionals, those with advanced degrees, um, are advancing as the economy recovers and everyone else is struggling and not seeing the same opportunity to thrive um, in recovery. So the advocacy from the league and from the chancellor's office is around an E-shaped recovery, focusing on education and equity in the economy. And so this is a message that we will be um, seeing and hearing and certainly our legislators will be hearing from our advocacy groups as we really try to focus on a recovery that serves everyone well. There are some interesting items in the governor's budget proposal, some that we have, have not seen before. Um, one new item really invests in Chancellor Oakley's call to action and $600,000 is identified for the system office to coordinate system-wide anti-racism efforts and to assist with the implementation of the new ethnic studies course requirements um, for the CSU and in particular our transfer students. Also new is the governor's budget proposal requires that all segments of higher education, every district or college must submit an action plan to close equity gaps as a condition for receiving the proposed COLA. We still don't know if our existing C plans, our student equity and achievement plans, are going to fulfill this um, action plan requirement. Um, more information is expected in the trailer bill and will certainly be coming our way as the, the budget unfolds. Another interesting component of the governor's budget proposal is the requirement for more online courses. This is across each segment of higher education as well, so it includes our CSU and UC partners. And it requires that districts maintain a number of online courses in 21-22, that's 10% above the online offerings in 2018-19. This is going to be an interesting to, one to watch as community colleges have been very responsive to student demand and have built out their online course offerings um, to meet that demand. I mean, um, perhaps not as much in the CSU and UC, but I have already heard from several of our sister colleges in the California Community College system who are very concerned. In fact, there are there's at least one college that already was offering 60% of their coursework in an online format, and they just don't know that they can, um, can make this type of increase and be sustainable. So again, trailer language is going to provide um, detail as we move forward, but it's an area that we will keep our eye on. Finally, the, the budget proposal seeks to have better cross-sector alignment. In particular, this has some focus on associate degrees for transfer. I have heard um, several comments about re it requiring the UC to accept ADTs. Unfortunately, the language really doesn't take us there. It simply says that if UCs use an alternate pathway other than the associate degree for transfer, that they must clearly specify what courses are in that pathway that are different from the associate degree for transfer requirements. So it will certainly provide some clarification for our students, but it is not the step forward that many were hoping for. So Dr. Curtis provides an update from the Office of Instruction, and he is going to focus on the details around enrollment. Um, this is a slide that I shared last spring on opening day, and it really illustrated 
both our growth over time of full-time equivalent students and um, how it was, the different areas in which it was being generated. So um, the men's colony is broken out, emeritus, and we could, we could see what the makeup of our total FTES looks like. And this was really helpful as we have been working to both eliminate summer shift or swing, um, where we would use the old um, method of stability um, for reporting our FTES. And we have moved into the SCFF model that uses a three-year look that really um, requires that we have incremental growth over time to see increases in our, in our funding. But then we had COVID. And everything that we know about enrollment, everything that we know about um, FTES and growth has shifted. And so even though we rely on our longitudinal data and we are certainly data informed in our scheduling and decision making, all of that does not have the same impact that it does in a non-COVID environment. So our fall of 2020 ended up roughly 12% below a fall of 2019. Our spring 2021 is shaping up to be very similar. COVID impacts statewide colleges. There are a small handful who have had some growth. Most colleges are landing somewhere between 15 to 20 percent reductions in enrollment. Um, other colleges as high as 25 to 30 percent below prior year. So lots of unknowns as we look toward fall of 2021. It is going to be complex decision making that goes into our scheduling. There are still so many pieces that are yet to be determined. We don't know what the rate of vaccination for, for students is going to be at that time. Um, and so I think our approach will very much mirror what it has been for this spring where we will delay as long as possible decision making um, to really provide strongest opportunity for a safe return to campus. Dr. Sanchez provides an update from student success and support programs, and really it features um, our virtual lobbies and how students are being served um, just in time through that modality and the use of Zoom. Um, we'll also highlight the in-person enrollment in financial aid assistance and services that we are currently um, continuing to provide both at the North County campus and in San Luis Obispo. It highlights the CARES and CASE funds that are available to provide emergency aid for students. And then there's lots of new information there as well, and in particular updates um, to content available on the Cuesta College webpage. So MindWise is a new resource that helps um, walk students through an evaluation process to get them to the correct mental health support that will um, assist them um, available through our student health services. There's a redesigned student support resolution webpage and a redesigned DSPS webpage. Both of those really focus on ease of use for our students, our faculty, and our staff. I really want to wrap up this morning with good news and there is great news to share. I had a conversation with Dr. Daisy Gonzalez, who's the Deputy Chancellor for our system earlier this week. And our, our meeting was to be about the diversity, equity, and inclusion work at Cuesta College, but our conversation began with her comment that she had just read our ICER and our team report and said it was the best they've seen in years. So congratulations to everyone who was involved in the, the drafting, the editing, the evidence building, um, the technical putting together of the report. There were many, many, many hands involved. It really is a reflection of the work across the campus 
um, to maintain alignment with those accreditation standards. And certainly, Dr. Gonzalez um, doesn't have a voice <laughs> in um, the commission and the action that, that they took on Wednesday, which is still unknown to us around our accreditation reaffirmation. But it was great to be recognized by this leader in our system for our work around accreditation. I was also able to share with her this incredible student success story from fall of 2019 and 2020. So in 2019, our overall course success was at 75.3%. That's all of our sections regardless of delivery modality. At that time, approximately 23% of our course sections were offered online. You can see there's an 8% difference in success in courses that are delivered in a traditional face-to-face -face lecture versus lecture delivered 100% online. When you think about our fall of 20, instead of 23% of our course sections being offered online, 92% of all of our offerings were 100% online. And we introduced new modalities, including synchronous online lecture and synchronous online lab. And if you just do the math, and I have to warn you, this is, this is Jill math. So some of the assumptions were that everything we did was lecture. So if you did the math, assumed all of our courses were lecture in fall of 2020, we could anticipate overall course success of about 68.84%. Because when we heavily weight our course offerings to be online, we're going to experience that 8% difference in success. But the reality was that student success improved across all of our course delivery modalities. Our overall course success in fall 2020 was 74.3%, just 1% below where we had been in 2019. In fact, our online lecture success improved from 68.2 to 71.6%. Our online lab improved to 73.1%. And our new modality of synchronous lecture introduced at 74.4% success. This is an amazing success story, and it is a collective success story. Our students, our faculty, our staff, and our managers all work tirelessly in the midst of great challenge to bring this forward. I'm incredibly proud of what Cuesta College achieved in the midst of the pandemic. I want to wrap up today and share this quote. I often say that our words matter. I think it's very important. And when I saw this quote, I thought, there's another community college leader who is, is thinking like I am. As educators, our words have significant impact. We are responsible to ensure that education remains a place of information exploration, conversation, connecting with others, and understanding different perspectives. Our words enable us to tell our story and help others understand that education is the key to realizing their potential. Without healthy discourse, education doesn't happen. Potential is not realized, and society suffers. Each of us, faculty, classified professionals, managers, and our students start the spring term under continued uncertainty. In addition to the effects of the prolonged pandemic, we are seeking to make sense of the capital riots and preparing as we can to assist students in building their own understanding. This is a challenging time for our nation, for our state, and for our community. And we hold a special responsibility for serving all who desire a college education. 
Let's continue to build community through empathy and belonging as we stand as the beacon of educational opportunity. Let's encourage and remind one another of our collective success despite the challenges of fall 2020. Let's stand united in our commitment to student equity, anti-racism, and ensuring that Cuesta College is no place for hate. Your dedication, determination, flexibility, creativity, persistence, investment, nurturing, and service on behalf of students changes lives. Thank you for making Cuesta College an exceptional place to learn and thrive. I appreciate you all very, very much. You received an email from Todd Frederick yesterday at 447. It has a link to the faculty meeting that's scheduled to begin at 1015, and you will shortly receive link that will take you to these um, additional segments of opening day that we just previewed. Have a great spring semester.